All right, our exclusive reporting on the DOJ, we can report right now that the missing FBI text messages, we'll tell you about it in a second. This is a game-changing development, but first, President Trump is letting the special counsel, Robert Mueller, know that there is no collusion and he has nothing to hide. Listen to this. Can you talk to Mueller? I'm looking forward to it, actually. You want to? Do you have a date yeah, set? Yeah, just so you understand. Set, There's Mr. been President? no collusion whatsoever. There's no obstruction whatsoever. And I'm looking forward to it. I would love to do it. Would you in person? You know, again, it's, I have to say, subject to my lawyers and all of that. All right, with his lawyer's approval, that makes sense, but is that the smart play? Sounds like game on to me. The Drudge Report tonight has this headline up, and it sums it up perfectly. Trump stares down Mueller. I'll do it under oath. Now, Judge Janine Pirro, she'll join us later with legal reaction. Now, also tonight, the walls are closing in on those responsible for this massive corruption, abuse of power at the top levels of government in what we are now calling state-sponsored sabotage. Now, with this flood of damning news exposing all this malfeasance, the special counsel, Robert Mueller, and his spokespeople in the media are now working overtime. They want to create as many distractions as possible and and discredit anybody that's telling the truth, like us here on the Fox News Channel, for daring to report on the truth. Now, to be perfectly clear, for those that don't pay attention and want to advance lies and false narratives, we are not and never have been and never will be talking about rank and file members of the FBI, the DOJ, and the intelligence community. They honor us with their service every day. And there's no show on television that has and will continue to support these hardworking people that do such a service to their country. But the criminal wrongdoing that we are exposing has to do with only a few select Obama administration top bureaucrats who thought that they knew better than you did about who should be your president. Now, the liberal media is engaged in a total smear campaign. They want to shut up people like me and Greg Jarrett and Sarah Carter and John Solomon and Tom Fitton and Victoria Tunsing and so many others. They want to conceal the truth. Now, we've always had the utmost respect for the FBI. I've had family in the FBI and the intelligence community and police officers and firefighters and the military. Now, can the liberal media say the same for themselves? We know the answer. How many times have you heard them attack people in uniform, those that service as much as they do? Now that we're getting closer and closer every single night in uncovering this huge, historic, massive scandal, the media is rushing to slander and discredit those of us that are exposing this. At the end of the day, every one of these so-called journalists at these so-called news networks are going to look like fools that we already know that they are, the same people who have been clinging to a sinking lifeboat of this phony Trump-Russia collusion story. It's been a year, and they still cannot admit they've been completely wrong. There's no evidence, and in many instances, they're flat-out lying. And now, since none of this has worked, well, the media is now doing the bidding of Robert Mueller, their breathless, hysterical reporting about what the special counsel is doing. Don't believe me? Let your own eyes see. A dizzying 24 hours in the Russia investigation, no longer just inching toward the president. This morning, it is more like careening. Happening now, breaking news, closing in. The special counsel's Russia probe closes in on the president and his inner circle. After 24 hours of bombshell reports uh, and developments, another one. Just in, CNN has now learned that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, wants to question the president's former White, White House chief strategist, Steve Bannon. The outline of an obstruction of justice case filling in bit by bit. As NBC's first read, the political team notes, if the optics around Bill Clinton's tarmac meeting with Loretta Lynch were bad, this is, quote, a hundred times worse. It was a day of revelations in the Russia probe. If there's any day to be watching Ari, it is today. Russia, Russia, Russia. A lot going on. Now, have you noticed any time there's big breaking news about this massive government abuse of power that we're unfo that's unfolding every night on this show, all of a sudden three or four stories about the special counsel's investigation in the media, they're all over the place, and it spreads like wildfire within their own echo chamber. So predictable at this point, the media is out of control with their bias. It's painfully obvious. And by the way, a lot of their information, I believe, when all is said and done, is probably coming from Robert Mueller and, of course, his liberal Democratic hacks that have been pushing this themselves.
Now, also tonight, big developments about the explosive classified memo exposing FISA abuses against the Trump campaign. Fox News is reporting the Department of Justice is now asking the House Intelligence Committee Chairman, Devin Nunes, to not publicly release the memo that we deserve. Now, do the DOJ, do they not understand? Congress has oversight over them. They're investigating them. They don't have to hand the memo over to anybody in spite of what the liberal media says. They shouldn't do it. Now, this is why we are once again calling on you, the American people, to call up your members of Congress, demand the memo be released. Release the memo. Hashtag release the memo. Call the number on your screen, 202-224-3121. Tell Congress the truth about one of the biggest scandals in American history, and we have a right to know. Also, breaking this hour, this is huge. New information about the missing, struck page text messages. Remember, five months, a very critical time period. Sources are exclusively telling me tonight, multiple sources, that the Department of Justice is, as we speak, in the process of successfully recovering many of those text messages in that five month period of time from the Trump hating FBI officials Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. The DOJ is also trying to track down their mobile phones. This is huge because those texts are during that critical time during the so-called Russia investigation. Here's a big question tonight. Was the deputy FBI director, Andrew McCabe's cell phone impacted by this so-called glitch? McCabe, he was Lisa Page's boss. And both she and Strzok talked about, quote, the insurance policy in Andy's office. We believe that was McCabe. And also brand new tonight, we have new revelations about one of the lawyers that is now representing disgraced former FBI director, soon to be probably investigated, national embarrassment, James Comey. According to BuzzFeed, one of Comey's attorneys turns out as his Columbia law professor buddy, the guy he leaked a memo to to the New York Times because he wanted a special counsel appointed, which turned out to be, oh, Comey's other BFF, Robert Mueller. You can't make this up in a spy novel. It's one giant incestuous circle of corruption. And we have even more proof. James Comey testified, remember, that he gave his classified memos to Robert Mueller. And according to the reports, the special counsel interviewed Comey about his memos last year. By the way, they also collaborated before he testified. Those memos contain classified information. They were created on government computers. So Comey broke the law by removing them from the FBI. But it's clear that Mueller didn't care about any of that because they're best friends. Mueller's main focus is and has been and continues to be carrying out a witch hunt to unseat a duly elected president of the United States, President Trump. It's ridiculous and it's an abomination to our Constitution and the rule of law. And as you have seen by watching the show the past couple of nights, well, there have been so much breaking news about the FBI text messages that we've been able to cover all of this. I want to go back and I want to make sure you're up to speed, highlight a couple of very important pieces of information. Now, remember, Senator Ron Johnson revealing with Brett Baer last night that an informant told him that there was some sort of anti-Trump, quote, secret society within the FBI. Here's Senator Johnson explaining it on special report. Take a look. What this is all about is further evidence of corruption, more than bias, but corruption at the highest levels of the FBI and that secret society. We, we, have, we have an informant that's talking about a, a group that were holding secret meetings off-site. There is, there's so much smoke here, there's so much Boy, suspicion. Let's, let's stop there. A secret society, the, a secret meetings off-site of the Justice Department. Correct. What, and you have an informant saying that? Yes. Is there anything more about that? No, we have to dig into it. That's that's. This is not a distraction. Again, th this is this is bias, potentially corruption at the highest levels of the FBI. Really, secret societies? You can't make this stuff up. ABC News, they have obtained this particular text message, and they're actually questioning if it was all a joke. We'll let you decide. Lisa Page, writing Peter Strzok, are you even going to give out your calendars? Seems kind of depressing. Maybe it should just be the first meeting of the secret society. Senator Johnson is saying that he's trying to get to the bottom of it, as he should. And Senator Johnson is also making news by releasing text messages from anti-Trump FBI lovers Peter Strzok and Lisa Page that also highlight even further their extreme bias. Now, just after midnight on May 19th, remember, it was gone from December 14th to, what, the 16th of, of May. 
and then Mueller was appointed, and all of a sudden they started reappearing again. But Strzok appears to be talking about getting an offer to join Mueller's investigation. This is key. And by the way, writes here, Strzok, my answer is no, no. And the lead division, and then I think, wait, a case will be in the history books? A chapter? Much like you tell me about my extra time in the field and all the cases, would you trade it? A million people sit in, in, in odd staff jobs. I didn't quite get that. This is a chance to do, well, in maybe the most important case of our lives. By the way, the same guy that was saying earlier, um, there's no there there. 30 minutes later, Strzok asked Page the question, an investigation leading to impeachment? So did Strzok have inside knowledge about what Robert Mueller's end goal was going to be? Because that statement from Strzok contradicts what he said when he was talking about the possibility of Trump-Russia collusion on May 19, two days after Mueller was appointed. You may remember the time frame. He says, you and I both know the odds are nothing. And if I thought it was likely, I'd be there meeting with Mueller, no question. I hesitate in part because of my gut sense and concern. There's no big there there. Why would I want to do that? So Strzok, despite his rampant bias, knew from the beginning Mueller was leading a witch hunt. And Strzok would know because he was the top intelligence official at the FBI, and he's the guy that signed the papers that started the entire Russian investigation. Now, Strzok also dropped this bombshell about the Clinton email investigation, writing, for me, and this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with my, well, the mid-year exam, his MIE, which was the FBI's code name for the Clinton investigation. Now I need to fix it and finish it. Fix it and finish it. Strzok is texting this May 19th. Remember, when he, we know Hillary Clinton wasn't even interviewed till the 4th of July weekend about her email server scandal on the 4th of July. Now remember, it's at this point that Strzok and Comey and others were drafting the exoneration on May the 2nd before they talked to Clinton, interviewed Clinton, and 17 other key witnesses. And Strzok and Page, well, they suggest in text on July 1st, just four days before Comey's announcement, three days before they interview Hillary, about Clinton, that both of them and the former Attorney General Loretta Lynch all knew that Clinton wouldn't be prosecuted. It's smoking gun evidence. What more would you need? Strzok, Comey, Loretta Lynch, they all knew the fix was in, it was rigged. Let me co connect the dots for you. So you got deep state actors. You got these people, top people at the FBI, Strzok, Page, Comey, and then at the DOJ, the AG, Loretta Lynch, and of course, Andrew McCabe, shielding Hillary Clinton from prosecution, even though it is obvious, incontrovertible, she committed felonies and broke the law because they wanted her to stay in the race and defeat in the election Donald Trump. Now, remember, language in the exoneration statement was changed from what was breaking the law, the legal standard, gross negligence to extreme carelessness. And then you had Hillary Clinton shelling out, what, over $12 million for an unverified, salacious dossier with Russian propaganda and lies because she wanted to rig the general election against Trump? After all, she's the same woman that rigged the primaries, according to Donna Brazile, against Bernie, Bernie Sanders. And on top of that, as a backup, Obama deep state officials, they used this fabricated dossier to obtain a FISA warrant. In other words, the Hillary bought and paid, paid for phony Russian dossier to spy on an opposition candidate, Donald Trump, in an election year. And then as a president-elect, talk about Watergate. This is Watergate on steroids and human growth hormone. The constitutional violations are severe and historically unprecedented in this country. You have deep state actors using and abusing the powerful tools of intelligence that we give them to protect this country and covering up Hillary Clinton's crime because they wanted her to stay in the race, not be indicted because they thought they knew better than you who should be the president. And more importantly, they thought they would never get caught. They never thought Clinton was going to lose. Now, tonight, it is time for the Attorney General. By the way, good job at the DOJ tonight by actually finding and now recovering some of the missing five months of text messages. But, set, but the Attorney General Sessions, and he needs to, I would argue tonight, appoint a second special counsel. Why? To investigate and prosecute every single person that we are talking about involved in this.